indigestion. It's something that happens to most of us at one time or another. But for about 10% of the population, those little antacid tablets advertised on television do not spell relief. It's not uncommon for stomach acid to spill up into the esophagus, especially after eating spicy foods or a big meal. This produces an uncomfortable burning sensation in the middle of the chest and may also be accompanied by a biting, pungent sensation in the throat. In severe cases, the muscle that is supposed to block the backwash of acid and digestive enzymes into the esophagus functions improperly. So instead of being an occasional occurrence, gastroesophageal reflux, as this condition is called, happens more and more frequently, causing constant discomfort and potentially damage to the unprotected tissues of the esophagus. There are two basic treatment options at this point. Medical therapy, which primarily relies on prescription drugs to decrease gastric acid secretion, or if that fails to produce the desired results, surgery to repair the faulty plumbing. Once all the appropriate tests have been completed to determine if a patient is a candidate for surgery, Dr. Leggett explains the surgical procedure. So after we've got the five trocars in place with the camera here and the working ports spread around, we'll bring an instrument in from this side to elevate the liver up then we'll use the two ports on this side to clear behind the esophagus in order to expose the hiatus, which is where the hole is. We'll put some sutures in behind the esophagus to close that hole. We then literally take the top part of the stomach here, called the fundus, wrap it behind the esophagus like a hot dog in a bun, sew it back to itself over the esophagus in order to create a new valve to prevent this acidic gastric contents from coming back up into your esophagus. When we tie those sutures down, we, we actually place a device in the esophagus while you're asleep called a bougie, and it's about as big around as my thumb or a little bit larger, so that when we tie those sutures down, we don't get them too tight. It still allows you to belch, but yet the food can go down, okay? The difference between the laparoscopic approach and the traditional open approach for this procedure is that the traditional open approach requires an incision from just below your breastbone to below your navel, as opposed to five small holes with the laparoscopic approach. What does that mean in terms of hospitalization? With the traditional open approach, you'd be in the hospital for five to seven days at minimum, with a six-week recovery time to go back to work, as opposed to 24 to 48 hours more or less in the hospital with the laparoscopic approach and a return to work within a week, 10 days. So it's a huge difference in terms of recovery, return to work, and actual pain that you feel. An incision this large for the traditional approach is very painful. One of the reasons requiring longer hospitalization for pain shots and so forth. With a laparoscopic approach, you may have a few pain shots, but you'll quickly move to a pain pill and when we send you home, we'll send you home with a few extra pills just in case you need them. Um, the, things that, the things that can go wrong intraoperatively that, that might require you to be converted from a laparoscopic approach to open would be if there was a bleeder or a hole in an organ or something of this nature that required opening you up to fix. That's very rare in this procedure. Uh, Postoperatively, the problems that you might encounter, you might have a little bruising where the scope was manipulated back and forth, the instruments went back in and out. For the first few days to week, 10 days, whatever, you may have the feeling that food is gonna get caught in the lower esophagus where the wrap is. The reason for that is, is because of the manipulation in this area, they're swelling, just as if you bumped yourself, bruised yourself, and you see the swelling over the skin or subcutaneous tissue. The same swelling can occur inside your abdomen. So with time, that gets better. If you become uncomfortable with the swallowing, you can't get the food down for whatever reason, and we feel that it's significant enough, there is something we can do about that, and that is we just simply take a gastroscope, put it back down in the esophagus, and we have a balloon that we blow up and just stretch it a little bit. I think a couple of things that, that you'll be pleasantly surprised about because of the successes we've had with this procedure is number one, you'll be able to sleep at night without worrying about the stuff moving up in your throat and choking you. 
The second little surprise is how much you're going to save cost-wise on the medicines and the antacids that you've been buying over the years. I think this will really be a benefit for you and your family. Does that pretty well explain the procedure to you? The laparoscopic approach to Nissen fundoplication is relatively new. Early results, however, compare favorably to those for open surgery, which is successful in 80 to 90 percent of the cases with only an occasional failure. Dr. Leggett and his staff will be pleased to answer any questions you may have to help you prepare for your Nissen fundoplication surgery.